Hello, hello, everyone. Justin Crumley back again with another edition of Cujo's Corner. I hope everyone, first and foremost, I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday, um, have, had a happy new year. Uh, I'm actually recording this on New Year's Day, so uh, yeah, happy new year. <laughs> uh, anyway, hope everyone had a great holiday weekend. Uh, hope everyone had a uh, safe and uh, fun holiday these past couple weeks. Just, you know, we're safe, had fun, whatever. Um, so, uh, 2021 is now behind us. 2022 is the new year. So, let's start this off on a major down note. Um, John Madden. Uh, legendary coach and commentator, color commentator, passed away on I you know I think it was like on December twenty seventh or something or twenty eighth. It was it was it was a little after it was a few days after his uh, his documentary had aired. And now, admittedly, I have not seen the documentary, so I'm not I'm not I, I can't really give you my thoughts on that. Um, when it comes to a guy like John Madden, I feel like it doesn't matter how old you are, if you are in some way, shape, or form a football fan, you know who John Madden, you knew who John Madden was. You knew his name, you knew of him, uh, rather it was because of the video game or because you're a fan of football and you'd watch his color commentary or maybe you got to see him coach uh, the Oakland Raiders at the, at the time they were the Oakland Raiders. Um, I do not have any stories about John Madden. Well, I have one and I will tell it. Um, but it's, you know, it's always unfortunate when a guy like John Madden uh, passes away. Now, he was 85. The cause of death, you know, to my knowledge, hasn't been released yet. Um, but the man lived a long, fulfilled life. I mean, like I said, he was a legendary coach, legendary color commentator. Um, I feel like any football fan recognizes the name John Madden and for good reason uh you, you never heard I you know to me personally I've never heard any scandals involving John Madden the guy has never you know from what I gather everybody that met him and knew him said he was one of the nicest guys you ever knew uh you know again I don't have any stories or anything to retell uh as far as like um experiences or anything, but John Madden is, you know, like I said, he was a legend, and when a guy like him passes away, it's always felt, you know, from everybody in the industry, in, you know, in the sports industry, football, the NFL, it's, it's very sad, um, now, as for the story, I do have one story, and, you know, I, I, I will uh, kind of just talk about what the video games have really meant to me, because that, I really feel like that's all I can offer you guys, as far as, like, any kind of stories about John Madden. Um, so, <laughs> you guys know, this is no secret, I'm a Pats fan. If you guys have seen my film... Uh, 13 years of Patriot, you would know that Super Bowl 36 was the Super Bowl that I, where I became a Pats fan. I was nine years old when I saw it, and when I seeing them overcome the odds and beat the Rams, it, it was a big deal for me. But anyway, <laughs> um, anyone who remembers that game would know that Pat Summerall and John Madden actually uh, commentated. They did that game together. 
And um, towards the end of the game, it was uh, the Rams had just tied it up 17-17. There was maybe, I think it was like a minute 12 or something like that, minute 24. I don't know. It was like just over a minute, something like that. And they gave the ball back to the Pats. And the Pats are trying to move the ball down the field. And John Madden, I'll never forget this, John Madden actually said, I don't agree with this. You got to play for overtime. I, I don't I don't agree with what the Patriots are doing here. <laughs> and then about halfway through that drive, he immediately, he like recanted what he said. He said, whoa, I've, I, I'm going to have to take back what I said. Now I really like what the Pats are doing. They, you know, they marched down the field, they go down, and they won that game. It's a really fun game to go back and rewatch. For me personally, it's a fun game to relive. And I guess it's it's just going to be, it's just not going to be the same knowing that both Pat Summerall, John Madden, you know, they're both gone. They're both dead. It's, I guess it, it just kind of makes you, like, ponder, like, holy crap, you know. Uh, that game, it, it feels like I just saw that game yesterday. And now, holy holy crap, you know, suddenly I blink, I'm almost 30. And both those commentators are dead. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at that. I, I It's just... I guess for me, it's just, it, whenever like a big figure or, or somebody I, I've known of, when they pass away, I always get this sense of like, wow, you know, like, it's almost like shock and awe for me. And I, I don't want to make this, I don't want to drift off too far off the topic, but I guess from next time, I rewatched Super Bowl Thirty Six. It's it, it'll be. Uh, I think it'll it'll be more special, you know, because like I said, it was the Super Bowl that I became a Pats fan after watching, and um, yeah, just knowing that two legendary commentators, Pat Summerall, John Madden. They did that game. I guess it's it's just it's just awesome to to know that. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, now I I guess I'll get into uh, the video game franchise Madden. Wow. <laughs> what can I say that pe that has not already been said? The the Madden video games have been a very big part of my life. Uh, my buddy Josh and I, we, growing up, we used to play those games relentlessly. It was, uh, like, it was, it was almost just a thing we did. Like, every year, the new Madden would come out, one of us would buy it, we would play each other, we would, we would do franchise mode, we would do my player mode, where you, you would get, like, drafted. Um, by a team, like an actual NFL draft. Uh, and, and I think in like 08, they they added, it was like either 08 or 09, they added the option to be drafted by your favorite team, which was kind of cool. So, you know, yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, Madden, the Madden video games, at least the earlier ones, the mid-2000s ones, were... I think I speak for a lot of Madden fans when I say this. Um, I think they were they were the leaps and bounds. They're better than the Madden games that come out today. Now, not you know the graphics obviously aren't better, but gameplay, the variety in game modes. I really feel like EA is is just kind of stripped Madden of what made it fun. You know, because in here, I'll get to that in, in just a minute. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But what I really loved about those mid-2000s Madden games was just the variety. Like I said, you could do a franchise mode. You could do a my player mode. 
Um, I, I don't know this for sure. There, I think there was like a GM mode, but that might have just been franchise mode if you decided not to play the games. Um, but yeah, I, I you know I, I feel like the the recent Madden games, you know, they had that story mode. Uh, at least I, I haven't played Madden 22, but I have played Madden 21, and they, you know, they added that story mode where you create a player, you, you, you start in high school, then go through college, and I, t I kind of thought it was lackluster at best. Um, it really does feel like EA just slaps these games, to, and, and look, mind you, I haven't looked into, like, how they put these games together. I've done absolutely no research whatsoever. Um, it just kind of feels like EA just slaps together a random, you know, a random football game, and they put little to zero effort. They half-ass the entire thing, and they just shove it out to to the to the markets because they know there's no competition to go up against them. You know, there's not many alternative football games. There's no competition. So they could just make the Madden games crap, and they get away with it. And, you know, look, as a longtime Madden fan, it kind of upsets me. But now that the guy that they're naming these games after is no longer with us, my only hope is... They actually put some effort into the next Madden game. And for God's sake, put effort into the Madden games going forward, EA. You know, I, I really wish there was more alternatives. I know uh, we're getting NCAA football back, but I, I'm pretty sure EA is going to do that too. I don't know anything about that, but I really hope they don't trash the Madden name, especially now that John Madden's dead. I mean, those early 2000s Madden games, they're so fun. They're so fun. And, you know, I'd like those back with better graphics and updated rosters. You know, I'd love to, to do a franchise mode with the Patriots, with Mac Jones, that running back core, uh, you know, and, and just... I'd like to do that and, and maybe do like a GM mode with the Lions or uh, a, a my player mode where, you know, you go through the draft, all that. I, screw the stupid story mode crap. Like, give us the old classic Madden back, the mid-2000s Madden. That's what I'd like to see. You know, just a little bit of effort. And... Um... Wouldn't it be cool? I think the last thing I'll say about the Madden games and really just about John Madden in general is wouldn't it be cool if they put him on the cover, they give him like a nice, uh, a special like cover where it's a picture or maybe like a collage of pictures of him and it's grayscaled and maybe like it's like a tin cover or something so it's nice and shiny. I mean, maybe like a Madden, a special collectible Madden cover kind of thing. Would that not just be the coolest thing? As like a nice little tribute to the man. Uh, and, you know, plus a damn good game. Not just something that looks cool, uh, but functions well. I'm just saying. I hope EA puts effort into the next Madden game in Madden 23, but... I don't know. I'm not holding my breath. Um, last thing I'll say about John Madden is, you know, rest in peace, John Madden. This game is not going to be the same without you. Um, and I guess before we move on to the next topic, I, I guess I'll just ask everyone, like, what are some stories you have about John Madden, uh, or Madden, the, the football games, the video games, um, whatever your thoughts are, you know, on either of those, uh, or, you know, did you get to watch him as a coach, like, just any, any stories about John Madden, you know, please, 
throw them in the comment section below. I, I would love nothing more than to talk to you guys about this, this stuff. I, I love this stuff. And I kind of feel bad that the only story I had of John Madden is one where it doesn't exactly make him look all that great, but look, I'm being honest, that's the only one I can recall. Uh, again, rest in peace, Madden. Uh, we're gonna, we're really gonna miss you, man. So, on that note, uh, let's talk about the Peach Bowl. First round of uh, the college football playoffs. Uh, Alabama did exactly what everyone thought they were going to do. They beat up on Cincinnati 27-6. to I didn't really get to see much of the game. I was actually out with my sister and her fiancé. Uh, we were just kind of hanging out. So I didn't really get to see the game. That game, so I, outside of the score, I have nothing to say. However, I did sit down and watch the Michigan-Georgia game, the Peach Bowl, and it uh, wasn't fun, if you're a Michigan fan, to say the least. <laughs> uh, Michigan got absolutely embarrassed, 34-11, uh, to 11, and, you know, look, don't let the 11 fool you. They got that touchdown in, like, garbage time, so, you know, the game was kind of over at that point when they got the touchdown. Uh, so we will be seeing a uh, SEC championship rematch in the national championship. Great, you know, whatever. Um, so, look, it is what it is, guys. It, the I, I look, I said it last week. Nobody thought nobody thought Michigan was going to win this game. I don't think. Except Michigan fans, uh, I I had talked about this on a previous podcast. Um, Michigan fans had built it up in their head that they were going to drop a forty burger on Georgia, and I had told you guys to curb your expectations and just kind of enjoy the ride. You know, I know I would not have wanted to hear that from the Michigan football team itself. You know, obviously not, but. We as fans, I feel like we can have that kind of attitude, and it's fine. But that said, they did not play very well in this game. And we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, what, what, what else do you want me to say? They, they looked absolutely unprepared. They were turn, They turned the ball over like four times. I think Cade McNamara had... Like, what, two or three interceptions. Corum had a fumble. Uh, this was just a very sloppily played game by Michigan. And, you know, pretty early on, I, I thought it was going to get ugly. They were down 7 uh, it's, it's like a fourth. There was like a fourth and four at, like, Georgia's 40. And they decided to go for it. And I, I'm sitting there, I'm like, why are you not... Why are you not punting the ball? Like, why are you not trying to pin them deep in their own territory? Or, hell, I, I don't know what the distance would be on that for a field goal. I'm not sure I would I would take the chance on that. But there was just no reason to get aggressive like that at that point in the game. It was the first quarter. It was literally your first drive. You, I, I don't know. I think the better option would have just been to punt the ball. But they went for it. And they failed. I kind of figured right there and then, like, oh boy, if Georgia scores and goes up 14 nothing, this could get ugly. And sure as shit, they scored, they go up 14 and nothing, and from there on, it just got ugly. There's no denying it. Michigan got absolutely destroyed. They got pantsed on live TV. They got embarrassed. They, you know, look. It, what else do you want me to say, guys? They got embarrassed. But it kind of brought me to another point. It brings me to another point. And it's, it's just like I said in the previous podcast. Guys, we were the underdogs in this game. 
nobody had us beating Georgia. Georgia was considered the best team in the country up until Alabama handed them their asses in the SEC championship. We were not expected to win that game. I mean, look, guys, and look, I've made this comparison before, and I'll, I'll get more into it in a minute, but we were basically the 2015 Michigan State Spartans. There's really no shame in that. That team was tough. They won the Big Ten. Ironically enough, they beat Iowa to, to you know, do it. Um, <laughs> and they, you know, they... Uh, they, they, they punched their ticket, and they got they got blown out by Alabama. But, hey, you know what? It is what it is. That's my attitude now. It is what it is. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, like, like uh, well, uh, another season's a failure. Uh, uh, the Michigan sucks because they lost in the playoffs. Uh, fuck this. They suck. Uh. Not gonna, I'm not going to do that. And I, and I think if you are one of those people, I think you're overreacting. But, you know, and again, I'll, I'll get more into that in, in a second. Um, last thing I want to talk about with this game is we got a decent glimpse of our potential future in this game. Now, at a point, they put J.J. McCarthy in, and they just kind of left him in. And I'll be goddamn, man, the guy made some pretty good plays. He There was one play he made where he... Was about to get sacked, and he and he wiggled his way out of it. He can run. He's got a great arm. You know, guys, I'm telling you, if he is, I, I really think he made a strong showing as a possible starter next year. I think he's going to beat Cade McNamara for that starting spot next year. And I know Cade McNamara is a senior, and you know he has his defenders. And and look, I I, I don't want people to take this the wrong way. I think Cade McNamara is a perfectly service serviceable quarterback, but that's the thing. He proved last night if a game is put in his hands, he ain't going to step up to the plate. J.J. McCarthy, now granted, McCarthy was going up against, you know, second stringers, maybe a few third string guys. It was, it was late in the game, but still, he went in, he made some plays, and he threw the only touchdown that Michigan got. So... I think he made a pretty strong showing for the future, and look as far as the as far as the future goes, I'm very optimistic for Michigan football. That's not something I could say that I've been in a long time. I've not been optimistic for Michigan football in a long time. I can't remember the last time. I am now. So that you know. That leads me to my next point. Let's talk about Michigan's season. And let's talk about it from the perspective of a fan. Now, this is just my perspective as a fan of this team. As a, as a guy who has grown up a Michigan fan his whole life. I didn't go to the school. I don't have any personal ties to it. I, I'm, you know, just a, I'm a Michigan fan. Just, just a fan. I couldn't be happier with how the season turned out. Um, I'm sure you guys, uh, you know, I, I, I know I bring this up a lot, and I'm going to bring it up again. I made that video where I said Harbaugh should be fired. And, I, you know, look, at the time, I thought I made some pretty solid points. You know, but in that video, I even said I was open to being wrong, and it turns out I was. And I couldn't be happier that I was. Overall, I would say the season was a success. A, a success. I don't know why I had trouble with that, but they had a huge statement victory over Ohio State. And yes, it was a statement win. Anytime, I mean, that was domination. 42-27, they dominated. So, that, you know, huge win over Ohio State. Not only a trip to Indianapolis, but they won the Big Ten. They finally, Harbaugh finally can add a trophy to his trophy case. He's finally got a ring. It's a Big Ten championship. They, you know, he took Michigan to their first trip to the college football playoffs 
And on top of that, they're the first team in college football playoff history to start the season unranked and to make the to make the playoffs. Not only that, they made it as a number two seed. What more could a fan ask for? You know, the answer is obvious, a national title, but hey, whatever. They punched their ticket. They played in the playoffs. They won the Big Ten. They beat Ohio State. I would say that's a, a very successful season. If you had told me at the beginning of the year, beginning of 2021, I shouldn't say beginning of the year, it's 2022. If you had told me at the beginning of last year that Michigan was going to go 12-2 and two, and they were going to they were going to beat Ohio State and they were going to make the playoffs and they were going to win the Big Ten and they are going to make the playoffs, I, I feel like I should have put that in that order, but whatever. And the only loss was going to be to Michigan State. I probably wouldn't have been happy about the Michigan State loss, but I would have been happy with everything else. Because if a Michigan State loss is the cost for a victory over Ohio State and a victory in the Big Ten Championship and a trip to the college football playoffs for a chance to play for a natty, I'm okay with it. Fine. We get the bigger prize anyway. They get their bragging rights for one Saturday of the year. We got the Big Ten Championship. I will take it. I made a comparison to the 2015 Michigan State Spartans. Look, that's exactly what this Michigan team reminded me of. They were tough. They were resilient. Not a lot of people believed in them, but they made something happen. They made the playoffs. And although things didn't go their way, they still got to play for it. So, all in all, I would say the season was a, was a success. Didn't end the way we were hoping. You know, I would have loved to have at least played in, against Alabama, but, you know, whatever. Uh, can't always get what you want. Hey, it is what it is. Season was a success, and I'm looking forward to the future. All right, so, from college... To pros, well, let's talk, let's talk about the New England Patriots now. <clears throat> they've lost two straight to Indy and Buffalo. They've lost number one seed in the AFC, and they've lost their lead in the AFC East. Um, their defense has not looked very good in the past couple weeks. Uh, now, losing to teams like Buffalo and Indy is not the total bad thing, but I'll get to that in just a second. So, the question I want to pose before I talk is, are the Pats in trouble? And by trouble, I mean, are they, do they, is there a legitimate chance that they miss the playoffs? Well, I, I don't think so. Now, if by trouble you mean they don't look like a playoff team, then yeah, I, I do agree. They have not looked very good in the last two weeks. Defense, defensively, they've not looked good in the last two weeks. Um, so yeah, you know, they haven't looked like a playoff team in the past couple weeks. In that way, yeah, maybe they are in trouble. But as far as like danger of missing the playoffs, I, I don't see that. Now, the reason I pose the question, are the Pats in trouble, I've seen a lot of Pats fans talking about this, talking about, you know, is, is something going on, is something off, what's going on, they've looked like crap these last two weeks, you know, and look, um, I'll say this. While they didn't look good losing to Buffalo and Indy, you guys do have to keep in mind, Buffalo and Indy are both playoff contending teams who both needed those wins a lot more than New England. Now, that's not me. Don't get it twisted. That's not me making excuses for how New England's been playing. I do think they are in trouble of being a, a possible one-and-done in the playoffs. 
I think that's a real possibility. Um, you know, and I'll get to that. But, guys, just understand this. Losing to teams that are desperate and need a W, look, it, it, it happens sometimes. And, it, and, look, it's not like our playoff chances are in too much trouble. Uh, we haven't quite clinched a playoff spot yet, but... Um, we, uh, you know, we need, we're somewhat in control of our own destiny. Um, we need to beat Jacksonville on Sunday, and I believe either Miami or Las Vegas needs to lose for us to clinch a playoff spot. Uh, I really don't see New England losing to Jacksonville, uh, tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, I... You know, that'll be fine. I don't know who Miami's playing, and for that matter, I don't know who Las Vegas is playing either. Uh, so I, you know, couldn't give you any info on that. Uh, but as far as, like, clinching a playoff spot goes, I think the Pats are fine. I don't think there's a whole lot to worry about, guys. I, you know, I think they'll, win, like I said, I think they'll win on Sunday. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll beat Jacksonville. Uh, they'll do what they got to do, and, you know, hopefully Miami or Las Vegas lose, can finally, you know, take a sigh of relief knowing that we clinched a playoff spot, we got our ticket to the playoffs, um, and, you know, for me personally, if the Pats, if you had told me at the beginning of the season that the Pats were going to make the playoffs with a rookie quarterback, I'd have been blown away. I would have been like, damn, after a 7-9 and nine year where everybody was ready to write us off, we go out, possibly win 10 games, and wow, and we made the playoffs. So, look, much like Michigan, I'll just enjoy the ride. You know, I'm not expecting the Pats to make a deep run in the playoffs, especially with a rookie quarterback. Um, you know, it doesn't happen. Uh, I think Ben Roethlisberger was the last guy. No, Pat Mahomes. Was Pat Mahomes? I don't think. I don't think. No, 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 because Pat Mahomes was, uh, was sitting behind Alex Smith his rookie year. So I think it was, I think it was Ben Roethlisberger his rookie year. He took Pittsburgh to the AFC Championship. I don't think a rookie quarterback has been able to take a team to the Super Bowl. So if the Pats can just clinch a playoff spot, I'd be happy with that. That would be going in the right direction, in my opinion. And I know that's weird to say about the Pats, but it is what it is. After a 7-9 year where there was a lot of questions and a lot of people were doubting them, I'm just saying a possible 10-win season and a playoff spot, I'm not complaining. Um, but again, I, I, I want to, I do want to, I don't want to sound like I'm just making excuses here. Look, they haven't looked that good the past couple of weeks. And if, look, if we're being honest here, no, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel very safe betting on them to make a deep playoff run right now. And in that regard, yeah, they are in trouble. As of right now, I don't think I could see them making a deep playoff run, but who knows? I do know one thing. Bill Belichick is a master of second-half adjustments, halftime adjustments. Now, obviously, this is not the half point of the season. There's only two games left um, until the season, regular season's over. And we might be heading to the playoffs. So, for us, it may not be over in two weeks, but, <sighs> look, like I said, if we just make the playoffs, we'll be fine, you know, we'll be all right, just punch our ticket, take this, kind of take this as a case-by-case -case thing, and really, in Bill we trust, so... I'm not going to give up on this team. I'm not giving up on Mac Jones. I'm not giving up on Bill Belichick. I think they're going to figure this out. Devin McCourty, Matthew Slater, 
uh, Dante Hightower, all the leaders in that locker room. You know, they're going to figure this out, and I think, you know, maybe they'll make a... Uh, Maybe they'll make a deep playoff run. Maybe they won't. But either way, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. So in keeping with the NFL, we're going to move on to the next thing. <clears throat> we're going to move on to our next topic. Actually, I do believe this is the last topic we're going to talk about on today's podcast. Um... Ben Roethlisberger has pretty much announced his retirement. Um, he's kind of hinted at his uh, possible final game at Heinz Field on, uh, I think it's next Monday or something. Maybe it's Sunday night. I don't know. But it's against the Browns. He basically hinted at retirement. And to be honest, It'd be probably two or three years after it should have happened. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. Um, Roethlisberger, for the past few years, has just not really all looked all that good. He's starting to slow down a bit. Age is catching up to him. And to say the least, he's no Tom Brady. Um, so I think a lot of people have been kind of expecting that this would probably be his last year. Uh, He's getting older. He's starting to slow down. It's probably time to hang up the cleats, put the jersey away, and just call it a career. And you know what? Roethlisberger has had a very successful career. Um, But I want to float a question because I think this is actually, uh, I think this is one that you're actually going to have to think about. Do you guys think that Ben Roethlisberger is a Hall of Famer? Now, I know the answer might seem obvious, but uh, I did a little comparison to two other quarterbacks that were drafted literally the same year as him, um, and uh, two other guys who are also subjects of this debate. Are they or aren't they Hall of Famers? At least I've heard, I've seen people talk about this. And the two other quarterbacks are Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers. Now, when you look at their numbers, I looked at their career stats, each and every, you know, all three of them. Obviously, Ben Roethlisberger hasn't quite wrapped up his career yet, but let's say this is his last year. Uh, I compared all three guys stats on pro football reference and when you look at the numbers all three guys are pretty similar like I think Ben had the most touchdowns I think Manning had the most picks or something had the least amount of touchdowns but the margin the gap wasn't all that big between the two between the touchdowns um, something like that. I, I don't know. I'm not going to go over every little stat off the top of my head. But the point is, their numbers, the stats alone, are all pretty similar. So, I feel like if we're going off of the stats, and you think that Ben Roethlisberger is a Hall of Famer, based on the stats alone, you'd also have to say that Eli and Phillip Rivers are Hall of Famers. Now... Let me break this down a little bit further. And actually, it might actually be be a bit of a stronger case for Ben Roethlisberger. Um, And and for what it's worth, I'll give you you guys my opinion on it. um, On this whole... uh, I'll give you guys my answer to the question. um, But let me break it down a little bit further. So, when going over the resumes, Ben has two Super Bowl rings on three appearances... Manning has two rings, two appearances. Rivers doesn't have any rings, nor any appearances. None of them have ever been all pros in their careers. Um, Let's see, going further into their resumes, Roethlisberger has two rings, like I said, two rings, three appearances. Uh, He was AFC Rookie of the Year in 2004, and he was a two-time passing yards leader in 2014 and in 2018. 
Uh, Eli, uh, really the only claim I, I could see would be the two rings on the two appearances. And he got MVP in both of those appearances, and they were against Tom Brady. So that alone is probably going to get him in. Uh, I have my own thoughts on that, but I'll, I'll save that. Uh, Rivers, honestly, looking at his resume, he had great years, and he won Comeback Player of the Year in 2013, but he was never a league MVP, as I mentioned, was never an All-Pro, doesn't have any appear Super Bowl appearances, doesn't have any rings. Um, Rivers was just an above-average quarterback in his career. He was good. He could win games, and, and like I said, he had great years, but I don't quite see strong enough of a resume for Phillip Rivers. Now, I guess I'll answer the question. Uh, do I think that Ben Roethlisberger is a Hall of Famer? <sighs> Ultimately, yes, I do. However... Don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Now, yes, one could say, oh, but he has two rings on two appearances. Yes, but he's never been an All Pro. He has never won a league MVP. He was only he's only led the league in passing yards twice. He's only had one 5,000 yard season his whole career. Uh, he's only had. You know, I mean, he, he has a strong resume, and I do think it's strong enough to get him in the Hall of Fame. I just don't think it's strong enough to be a first ballot. Now, I could be wrong, but I just, I don't see it. Um, now, for the record, uh, Eli Manning, I really don't think his case is strong enough. Again, you know, this is just my opinion. Uh, Eli, again, two Super Bowls, two appearances. He's got two Super Bowl MVPs, but he's never been a league MVP, was never an All-Pro. I just don't see enough there myself. Like, yeah, one could say, like, uh, but, uh, but Justin, uh, he beat your Patriots two times. Uh, he robbed Tom Brady of two rings. I understand that, but, again, if all it takes is a Super Bowl ring... To, win, to get in the Hall of Fame, then Trent Dilfer should be in the Hall of Fame. Now, to be fair, Joe Namath is in the Hall of Fame, and to be quite honest, I don't really think he should be. His numbers are really not that good, and let's be honest, Joe Namath is only in the Hall of Fame because of the, oh, we're going to win, I guarantee it. We're going to win, I guarantee it. It's because he guaranteed a win, they went out and won, and it was at the time considered, and, and you know, and some people still might argue that it's the greatest upset in football because it was the first time the AFL beat the NFL. Look, I still argue Joe Namath, not a Hall of Fame quarterback. And look, for what it's worth, like I said, I don't think Eli Manning is either. I'm just being consistent. That said, with the, you know, everything, can, all things considered, the fact that Joe Namath is in the Hall of Fame does lead me to believe Eli Manning and Ben Roethlisberger are going to get in. I don't think Phillip Rivers will. Again, I don't think his resume is quite strong enough. Um, doesn't have rings. Doesn't have a whole lot of memorabilia. He's not a very decorated player. He's only had a couple. He's had a few great years as far as the stats go, but... There's just not enough. I just don't think there's enough there for Phillip Rivers. Um, ben Roethlisberger, I think there's enough, but I don't think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I think maybe he'll be, you know, second, maybe third ballot. I don't know how many ballots you're allowed to be on, the, the, what the limit is, uh, if there's a limit. I, I don't know the rules around that, but I, I, I can say this. I don't think Roethlisberger is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, and I don't think Eli Manning will be a first ballot hall of famer either but i i think both guys i think they will i think both guys will find their way in the hall of fame into the hall of fame uh again i don't think eli manning or philip rivers either of them should 
but, you know, whatever. Um, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you think Ben Roethlisberger is a Hall of Famer? Uh, if so, tell me why. If not, tell me why. Uh, and, you know, for, the, for what it's worth, uh, what are your opinions on Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers, too? Do you guys, what, what side of that debate do you guys fall on? Do you guys think they're Hall of Famers? Do you not? Whatever you guys throw in the comment, whatever you guys want to, whatever you guys think, uh, throw it in the comment section below. Um, and uh, with all that said, that is all I have for you guys for this edition of Cujo's Corner. Um, thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. Uh, have I hope you guys had a wonderful new year. And let's have a kick-ass 2022. Hopefully it goes better than 2021. Uh, for me personally, it went pretty... 2021 actually wasn't bad for me personally. So I, I, you know, I hope 2022 is better just because, like, you know, for me personally, 2021 wasn't so bad. But anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts, your opinions on everything we talked about down below. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, guys, this is Justin Crumley from Cujo Productions saying stay awesome.